Hi, everybody. Welcome uh, to our member special chat with yours truly, Lauren Lewis. And today we are going to have an exclusive look <laughs> into Lauren's brain. It's a quiet place. <laughs> it's, it's a lonely place. It's a quiet place. But you're welcome to join in and, and look, take a, a sneak peek. Yeah, so we're really um, excited to do this today. And I just want to tell everybody, uh, Lauren, I, I have questions for her. Um, but we also want to hear from you. So if you have any specific questions, put them in the chat. I have a, the iPad right here, so I can hopefully look at them if it doesn't shut down on me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm just will, happy I'm not holding it. OK, I will try and get to those. <laughs> so I think, like, well, we've been to working together now for almost Nine years. ten years. Yeah, almost, almost ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Almost yeah. ten years. Yeah. And um, I thought we could just start with like how did Move and Shout begin? Let's just start there. Okay. <laughs> so nine years ago, I was approached by Nina and Susan to teach a class. I my memory was you had the name, you were teaching a class already called Move and Shout. You both gave me all, you know, a uh, books and videos and uh, I'm mean, just all this information to kind of catch me up what this disease involves and how people are affected by it and what there is out there already and what nine years ago ten years ago yeah. what was out there already was the big and loud mm -hmm. program yeah. and the voice program and a dance lot of PD. and a dance for PD and a lot of uh, PT standing and just lifting and things like that, and that's not what I do. So, um, so I took the concept of big and loud because that sounded like move and shout, and I incorporated what I do, which is exercise. But it was missing something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was. I mean, because you know, we can we can move, we can do an exercise and say it out loud. But it's still what I kept reading about what, and what really intrigued me more about this, everything that we're learning that really helps um, with symptoms is the cognitive. So I thought, well, how about if I attach the cognitives or the, or the exercises like I used to do? Um, well, actually, how, one of the things that they showed um, in, in a lot of the discussions and lectures was that dance was really good, Tai Chi was really good, and I thought, well, what is it about those two things? And what it is about those two things is that you're learning. You're not just doing the same thing over and over again. When you do Tai Chi, you're always doing a different motion. And when you're learning a, a dance, the dance changes. Right. So I thought, well, right. maybe I can do that with exercise. I can do exercises, teach the exercise. Some of them are going to be things you know or no, don't know. But if I change it and add a new exercise to it, each time we do it, it's like learning something new. And that was the beginning of Move and Shout. Yeah. And I got real excited about it. As you can imagine, <laughs> I, I get a little emotional. I get a little yeah. excited. And believe it or not, I remember when you were about to teach her, or after your first class. Oh, oh what a gosh. horror. After her first class. First of all, Susan Stahl and I, the co-founders, were uh, teaching the class. And well, we we really were not instructors, but we kind of pulled it off somehow, something we pulled off. And it was fun, uh, but Lauren didn't think she could do it. Oh, she, no. She didn't think she could do it. And after the first class, you were like, it was terrible. I was in, I was close to but, tears. But it was everyone horrible. thought it was fabulous. <laughs> and each time, I just have to tell you, it's gotten better well, and better and better and better. And I mean, it, she, you never stop. Really. Yeah. And it and it got better, and I have to say this is true. It got better, and I agree it got better, but it got better because of you. It got better because after every class, and I've never experienced this, I've been teaching at the point when I started here, I was already teaching over 30 years, and I never had um, a group experience like this experience. People came over, my worst classes, people came over and thanked me and thought, this was so much fun and you're great. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but it, you made me want to get better. 
And you made me better. I mean, the truth of the matter is you made me better. I'm better every time you you either compliment me or give me some input. You know, we should try this, try that. And I'm like, great idea. Yeah. Well, you have been um, so flexible. I mean, I mean, we've thrown pretty much everything okay. at Lauren that she could possibly I ever have to I deal with as an instructor. <laughs> And I do get happy, like happy time. You got three, two, one. Oh wait, before you start, don't forget to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty much everything. Every. Or maybe we won't have volunteers, and she's uh, planning to stand, and we have to have a seated class. Yeah. And you Ooh, have you got to go change with the play, it right? on a dime, right? Um, so, I guess my. So, what do you think? Like from the very beginning, like how has that format? changed or how have you honed your I kind of actually have been pretty true yeah to my format in fact I did I mean I kind of figured you'd be talking about format since you wanted to know what was in my head and it's really nothing's in my head it's all on paper <laughs> I am I am a very organized I mean very so I have a format that I came up with nine years ago and this is my format four or five exercises on the side, I write my symptoms, what I want to be directed before I even figure out what exercise I want to do. I know what symptom I want to be directing, and yeah. then I come up with my exercise, and I make sure that it flows because we do want it to, you know. But that's my basic format. <laughs> then I have, in, in the last nine years, found different exercises, either discovered them or used them already and realized what they're good for. And here's all my symptoms. I've got core and balance, gait, posture, range of motion, bradykinesia, contralateral mid, um, uh, and crossing the midline, rigidity, trem and tremors. Those are all the symptoms I like to work on. And here are, I don't know if you can see it, all the different exercises that I've come up with. And I'm still adding on a regular <laughs> basis. So, um, And I don't know if people can see that, but there are, I mean, it's, it's two pages worth. I'm going to come up. It's two pages worth. <laughs> it's and, a lot. And, um, this is something Lauren has given me before. If I had to maybe try to wing it occasionally, she's like, here, just use that. Just well, use this. It doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> but this is how I organize myself. I, yeah. I start with the symptom. I move on and think what, you know, what, um, exercise either we have done or what you know I try to I'm always on the web looking for new exercises um, that that are safe <laughs> yeah. and you know that can be done by you know you don't have to be a uh, an Olympic athlete to be able to do them um, and then you know I try to make it my own um, by you know by adding fun music and, and different things but it's there's um, it's it's not quite as creative as you probably think it's you know, it's all kind of pretty structured. Well, you really are humble because it's, it is extremely creative and I'm not sure that there's anything else out there like that. And it's always, it's always fun. Well, fun. <laughs> fun. And by the way, let's see. Oh, here, here. This is where it ends. This is my 2021. This is every class I taught in 2021 every one of them. I document all of them so I don't ever do the same one twice. Um, <laughs> I'm one of those people that don't like to exercise to the same exercise routine ever. Yeah. Once I've done it, I'm, I'm done. But I like to document it to make sure if someone else, there is a day where I'm not going to be able to teach th these classes. And I'm hoping it'll be in 30 or 40 years. But when that time <laughs> comes, the next person's got it all. They don't have to do anything. All they have to do is read this and take over. So that's my hope. All right. Well, we'll see about that. And we <laughs> hope you stick with us for quite for a while. At least 30 or 40 more years. So one thing, uh, let's see, Jay, um, he just wanted, he just asked, what did you do pre-move and shout? And I just want to preface that by saying, um, I knew Lauren. She didn't know me, but I, I, I didn't. <laughs> I knew Lauren because I used to take, I took your class at the JCC many, many years ago, and I was the one doing the step aerobics um, in the back. <laughs> well, she couldn't you see. and everybody. Yeah, we all we all <laughs> hid in the back, and I was afraid of you. <laughs> 
I was afraid of you, but I kept coming back. So I was a regular. That Pretty, is so funny. Yeah, I was a regular, but what else? Tell them, like, what, in a nutshell. Okay, I've been teaching for 30 years. Okay, look, first, first and foremost, I'm a special education teacher. That's my education. That was my love. That's what I wanted to do. Um, that fell apart. Uh, for a lot of reasons, and this is in the 70s when special ed was just starting to get mainstreamed and they were teaching to the test, not to the child, and I got very discouraged very quickly. But that's my love, teaching and teaching people that have difference in learning. Um, that's my love. Yeah. That makes sense. So then I, I did a million jobs, but I, 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 I got involved in exercise, and, in, in, uh, and that was my next passion. I love exercise. I like doing it. I like the way I feel afterwards. I like, uh, you know, it's just I like the way I sleep better. I like the way I'm, <laughs> I can eat anything I want to eat. Well, not anything, but you know. Um, so I got involved in exercise. In the 30 years of exercise, I've taught something called the flow, where they gave you these tubes and you filled it with water and you, you leaned left and right and worked your core. I've done balance boards. I've done step. I've done um, um, tubes. I mean, some of these really crazy stuff. I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff. Oh, we did wobble board. Uh, 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 they were like um, uh, pieces of wood that bend and you, you, you bend them and you work your shoulders and your core. I mean, I have done it all. <laughs> I've done high intensity. I've done. I've done everything. I've taught. I've never taught yoga. Can you see me teaching yoga? This is not a yoga personality. I've yeah. done yoga. This is not a yoga personality. Yeah. Um, but I've done everything besides that. I've done you know stretch classes and uh, uh, um, spinning, and I'm just you know high intensity interval training. I've done. Uh, you know, all that. So that's what I did before this. Okay. A lot. <laughs> A lot of insanity, too. Oh. Um, so let's see. Oh, and Jay is asking, what is the inspiration to your exciting, positive, energetic personality? Well, again, <laughs> I mean, I really, I don't know how to... Again, a lot of my excitement comes from you, from the people I work with. Yeah. Um, there, there was a time, and I, I stopped teaching group fitness for a while, just when I started, when you had approached me, I stopped teaching group, because the group experience became very negative for me, and it, it, it wasn't fun anymore. Um, my music was too quiet, or it was too loud, or it was too fast, or it was too slow, or my steps were too big, or they were too small, or <laughs> they weren't, or, you know, or, you know, can you help me get rid of this, or I, and, and this hurts, and that hurts, and I just, it, the fun was gone. Yeah. And then, as you said, you know, I, you said, you can do this. I was thinking, I, I, you know, I'm done with group. And, and it's just been such a positive experience. It's just been so, I mean, Jay, knowing that you come every week is my inspiration. I mean, yeah. it, yeah, it really well, it is. It makes a difference. It and makes just, a difference. And then seeing how well everyone's doing and right? yeah seeing the positive uh, getting and, the pos positive feedback and we're yeah. back to and, live classes here in austin thank goodness and um and once again it's so hard until you see it but i see people walk in s depressed or in pain yeah or just really you know hi how you doing bad day and i get that i mean i understand yeah especially after being around it for nine years now i really understand it but I also watch people leave an hour later. How you doing? I feel much better. I'm moving fit. I feel better. I'm, I, I'm so glad I came. I didn't want to come. <laughs> How many times do we yes. hear that? Yeah. I didn't want to come, but I'm glad yeah. I came. That's, where my, that's my inspiration because, again, I'm a special ed teacher at, at heart. Knowing that I can make a difference, knowing that I can help someone feel better is, is what I want to do. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, you and I have spent so much time talking. We talk, we've talked hours, talked about hours. symptoms, <laughs> talked about the, um, how to bring everything together. And it really is and such a blessing and a treasure to have Nina with the medical degree and understanding besides just having people with exercise. We, I mean, that's great. When we instructors get together, we really brainstorm, come up with some really great ideas and inspirations for each other. But having that medical input also really, really helps. So you've been a, a huge inspiration also. 
Well, thank you. Well, it's been a great team. And yes. We've all worked really, really well together. Um, so I think one of the things that people might like to see. Uh-oh. <laughs> Well, I know you have your whole list here. I mean, if you could see it up close, I mean, you have your own code. I have. I, I keep a she code. She has a code. It's it's. Yeah. And I, just, I can't read everything line for line. I just want to show. Can oh. I just show people this? <laughs> I just had to steal this I today because I didn't realize you had that. Yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. So Lauren has a code, and I've occasionally had to give talks, and I just wanted to do like a mini little class and Lauren's like here just take this well I'm just gonna walk up to the camera can I just share this? sure sure I mean I don't know what this means but maybe this is, this what is today's Lauren, class this is her class today um, can they see that Zoe yeah <laughs> so it's cross so, right left out front uh, out front up down two times yeah you see that can't you read that, that? that's what that is <laughs> so that's how she that's what she uses to teach and I know she says anyone can do this, but I, I, don't, I don't know. You do have... Some are really crazy. Um, and then I use red for if I want to change the vocals from what it is. Oh. I'll use red to tell me, say this instead of what it says. Oh. Um, See, so I didn't I'll very know often, that. Yeah, I didn't even know that part. Yeah. So. so I color code as well. Okay. <laughs> and she does have jump rope on here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oops. Yeah, so I spelled it. Even, I don't know if, if those of you that had taken the class just previous <laughs> to this interview, um, we were spelling jump rope as we were, and then we spelled it backwards. And the first two times I had no problem, it's in front of me spelled out. The third time I actually spelled it wrong while reading it. <laughs> so I don't know how that you, happened. I think you got too excited. I think I got too excited. Yeah, but you, I, you were too excited. You were testing yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Closing your eyes or something. Um, okay. Let me just see here um, what else we have. Um, great, let's see. Oh, Heidi said she's glad I could convince you to teach. <laughs> I am definitely glad. It was, it was not that easy because, uh, you know, you probably wouldn't guess this, but um, I have a strong personality. <laughs> and when I make my mind up, it's kind of hard to change it. <laughs> Um, oh, Meg wants to know is whether your closet at home is organized by color. No, <laughs> actually, okay, well, again, if you've been following me, you'll know that I only have three colors. I have black, white, and gray, and what I call my summer color, slate. <laughs> but not on the top. But not, not no, because you don't sell, you only just started selling the gray t shirts. Yeah. The t shirts come in all kinds of colors that I've never worn in my life. I mean, purple? Oh my, aunt, wait, Meg, I'm a New Yorker. I'm a New Jersey girl. We wear black, white, slate, gray. You know, she, yeah. yeah. I know, you've stepped out of your comfort I zone. I am out of my comfort zone, and I will happily wear purple for an hour. <laughs> well, you look good in it. <laughs> um, so, let's see, I have another question for you. Cause, um, so you've had to do a lot of different things. I mean, first of all, you teach almost in, every, day, every day in person, um, sometimes twice a day. Yes. And then you're teaching virtual classes right. also. What are some of the challenges that you've run into teaching virtual and, and maybe in person? Well, the virtual is always a challenge uh, for me because, as I've said, I really feed off of people I'm working with. So if I can't see, are you catching on? Is it too slow? Is it too fast? Is it just not fun? I can't see that. I don't get that feedback. And it's really, really hard for me. And what's fun and wonderful about working with this team is that um, I think Nina and um, Garden and Zoe, when they see that either I'm not, I'm not giving it, they'll stand right behind the camera and <laughs> do the exercise with me, so I have the feedback. And Nina's not that good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I start to laugh. And so that's fun too, is just watch. I'm like, okay, this is okay. We're all yeah. having fun together. And you know I make my mistakes, and you know that that doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I, um, I, I will never say, let's do that again on our, on our tape, 
when yeah. we tape, uh, pre-taped, because I think it's okay for people to see that it's not perfect. This is not the same as teaching um, for a professional, I mean, yes, we're professional exercises, but for people that just, you know, that this is for a different population. And I think we all need to know that we struggle, that not everyone's perfect, no one's perfect. Yeah. And even if you don't have this disease, these are hard exercises. These are hard to do. I have trouble with them. I struggle with them too. So, you know. Well, I, it makes me feel better when you do mess up every yeah. now and then. <laughs> As I say to them all the time, my population may have um, a PD, but I have OLD. So we're all, work that's old, I'm old. <laughs> so we're all working on something. Uh, oh, thanks Heidi for Th your, <laughs> Heidi just said, poor Nina, yeah. yeah I, I'm definitely not the most coordinated, but I've gotten better. I've definitely, oh, you're good, you're I've good. I've gotten better, she, I've gotten better. Well, remember you also jump in in the middle when you haven't been, okay, she, yeah. to be fair, she yeah. jumps in in the middle when, you know, she just, she was just on the phone for an hour, over 30 minutes in her office. She comes out and just jumps in and starts joining the class. So it's not like she's seen the whole instruction, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's, uh, Jay said you need at least one mess up per workout. Oh, don't worry. I got you covered on that one. Yeah. 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 There's... Definitely. So um, one other thing I wanted to ask you is just how do you, I mean, I know you have your format, but like, how do you come up with so many variations? I mean, obviously you've had, I don't know how many different classes you've taught. Okay, and that, that I think is the special educator in me. You know, just ta taking a task and breaking it down. And if one person learns this way, maybe someone else will learn, and learn better a different way. So sometimes I'll, I'll just go right into crossing. And sometimes I'll say, well, that's not, not everyone can do that. So let me break that down a little more. Let's bring one arm out and the other leg out and then cross. And then I'll think, well, some people don't have, you know, some people may need, that's not their problem at all, not problem, but that's, you know, that, that's not an issue. It's transitioning from going to the same side. And then I'll say, okay, so let me do that today. Yeah. And I kind of, that's the special educator in me. And also that fact that, as I said, I don't like to do the same thing twice. So I like to change it up and, and, um, and see how I can uh, either make it easier for you, make it harder for you, um, and make it more interesting for me. Yeah. So um, I think that's a lot of it. Um, but I'm always trying, in the back of my mind, it's never really about trying to challenge you or, or stump you. It's never about trying to stump you. It's always about trying to make you better, to make you stronger, to make you quicker, to make you larger, to make many of these symptoms that you struggle with more, more manageable. So it's never ever about, I got you today. And if I do, do, if I do that, that's never my intention. It's always about you at the end of it saying, boy, this was hard, but I got it. This was, you know, this, when I started, I was in pain and I feel better now. Or I was so stiff this morning and look at me walking now. Um, that's what it's about. Yeah. That's really, that's my intention. And that's, that's, that's what I Well, I'm, you definitely have, I mean, I know just when I do your class, I mean, I always feel like a sense of accomplishment by the end. I yeah. mean, I sometimes like, I don't know how I'm gonna ever do this. It <laughs> doesn't seem right, but it really, it, you, it, comes, it comes together. together and that's and, really. and repetition, and we know whether it's, you know, teaching kids with special needs or teaching um, a, a professional athlete uh, a, better, a better stroke that um, you know, it, I, both ends of of the spectrum, repetition is is key because what I've learned not just from my exercise but through working with Parkinson's is we're always building new neuro pathways. Whether you're learning a new stroke or a new you know whatever you're learning, um, it's the new pathways that make it stronger that make it per that make you better and better and better at it. So whether it's Parkinson's that may have you've lost that pathway or that pathway has become um, l uh, lessened, the repetition is key, and that's why, which comes full circle, <laughs> why exercise is so important, and that's also what got me why why you uh, kind of 
brought me in yeah. because you kept really saying they need exercise. This population needs exercise. They don't need, P not that they don't need PT, but that's not what we're going to do. We want to do exercise yeah. because we know that exercise works. Well, and well, that's what I can do. Yeah. I can do exercise. Well, I think um, it's just taking people from from PT. from PT where you've reached a certain point, which is what exactly what happened with my dad. Right, right. He did the whole uh, big program and did beautiful, was just walking and moving so much better. But then we, by offering the exercise, it just takes you to a whole new It reinforces level. what they've taught and then allows you, because you've gotten the base, you've yes. got the foundation of what PT does. Yes. And then you just, and then you move the next step. And that's what exercise does. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been great. And I guess the other thing I was just thinking as you were talking is that people might not know that you have had experience training trainers. Uh, yeah. So and you have like this big picture of, of how uh, you put an exercise program together and um, that was a great experience so, for me I have to say that was a lot of fun when I lived in New York I trained um, um, other uh, other instructors for a, a large conglomerate for a large uh, chain and um, uh, every annually not annually uh, quarterly they had to take these training sessions with me and it really helps me to see what trainers other instructors do Right. Um, and how to, you know, th that aspect is also a really interesting aspect. Well, on that note, I'm excited because we're going to be um, finally, we're getting our training program back together. So um, we're going to be training other instructors yes. for, so, throughout the, the country and maybe we'll see how far we'll, it goes. We'll see how far but it goes. We're going to start training other people in other in other states. Uh, to do to do our power for Parkinson's exercises. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about that. Very. Um, and lots of people have asked us for for these classes elsewhere, and uh, we're going to start with more like the strength and balance before we move. Move and shout is just that's an, that's another that's yeah. We start with strength and balance to get people to understand that you're not just throwing out exercises. That every exercise has a purpose, uh, Parkinson's purpose. Um, we have to, you know, that takes some learning and some understanding. Yeah. And once you get used to that, then we can build on to brain and body, which is, boom, a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, move and shout. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, well, it's been amazing watching you develop it. And, and actually, move and shout is, is we have, have that trademarked. I Yay! Mean, because it was so, became such a... Um, important part of what we do so uh, we're really proud of what I'm you proud of that uh, too I'm really proud that we were able to do um, that put together um, let me see here we have just a couple other things and actually while I look at these questions I just want um, to maybe ask our audience or Lauren is there anything you want to know is there anything our audience or what kind of feedback would be helpful for you Moving forward, um, I first of all, I, I and I know we've gotten feedback from other people that have uh, YouTube channels um, or that why, do YouTube channels. I answer every comment. <laughs> I, I take my I take the input very seriously and and to heart. Um, I love the compliments, but I really like the input. Yeah. You know, uh, um, last week someone said that uh, that the class itself was really really helpful both for his wife and himself. Uh, they were both able to work at two different levels, but they really liked that it was a slower class and he was able to really focus and work on the movements. And I, you know, and so um, I think about that. This week was a much more cardio class intentionally, but I mean, that's stored. That's stored. Yeah. And that's, I'm going to remind myself to every so often to really throw in a, sl a much slower class so we can really focus on that. That, that input is, is important for me. Let's me know what, um, what works best for you. And, you know, I'm not going to change all my classes, but I'm certainly going to make sure to keep that, you know, to throw that in when I can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think just when we do get feedback 
from the audience is so it's, it's just helpful for our program across the board right but yeah it's so helpful and we've been doing this this um, uh, survey during our live classes that I think has been really fun for people that are taking the class yeah. but also really helpful the last month or two I don't know maybe maybe longer um, during the class they they um, um, Garden or Nina or Zoe will put down uh, what's the most fun in this class today and they'll put down four things and there's a survey you know was it the crossing the midline was it the pattern was it the today was jump rope I did jump I did a jump rope today that was the last thing I thought people would vote on yeah but that came in number one who knew and in fact I threw that at the end thinking Ugh, it's at the end if they hate it it's too bad it's just at the <laughs> end I love it but I just thought and who knew I, I did not know so I'm gonna be throwing in a lot more jump rope maybe having you know maybe some like fun <laughs> jump rope <laughs> um, um, uh -oh. um, the cross-country skiing we did it a few weeks ago I thought that was really great um, we did get some um, some nice feedback on that so I'm gonna be throwing that in again that reminds you to use those opposites but it also forces you to lift the legs so those are all you know knowing that you got it that you um, felt it was helpful that helps me well that imagery is good yeah when you give that I think imagery really helps so let me see we have um, wait I know we have a question oh Jay is asking how you select your music. Okay. <laughs> I have been teaching since the 70s. The music that works best in class, even today, is the music from the 70s, 80s, and, and 90s. The beat is, the, is better. It's more fun. I can, I can hear the words. <laughs> I understand, understand the words. The words. <laughs> And let's face it, most people, um, the larger population of people with Parkinson's is, I mean, people tend to get um, diagnosed older. So I'm really not getting those 30 year olds, although we do have a young onset class. And I do, I've been trying to use more uh, contemporary music, but even, the, even that, I'm using, um, you know, Ed Sheeran and, and Bruno Mars. I'm using, you know, music, I, I don't use, okay, I don't yeah. use any rap. <laughs> Not that I'm opposed to it, it's just hard to do exercise to for the exercises we do. So um, I choose my music by what makes people smile in my, in my other classes. Um, when I go to weddings and I've been to, you know, re all my friends' kids are getting married and when you go to weddings, which is the songs that brings everybody on the floor? And it's, yeah. that's the Those song the I'll songs. use the yeah. next week. So that's, that's how I pick. A lot of it's yeah. just my own favorites or, you know. I mean, we have been really limited by YouTube. Oh, okay. What we can use uh, because of all the Very copyright. Very limited. However, um, I did just read that YouTube might be changing that. So we, oh. we may be getting some even better music. Yeah, a we'll, lot of we'll our see. music, ha well, they all have to be covers. We can't use any original music. So, uh, and a lot of the covers um, are either, they just don't work because they're, people like to make it their own and good for them. But um, a song that sounds great by the original artist um, just can't be used. It's either much slower or, or it becomes rap or it becomes a yeah. reggae or become, it's just a different, that just doesn't work for what we're doing. Yeah. And they're great, but. Yeah. Um, so let's if, see. And then they're just talking about a, the uh, If you have a, a song you want to hear, put it in your comments. I'll, I'll see if I can find a good rendition of it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll take, definitely. Uh, I'll take we requests. Take, <laughs> definitely take suggestions for yeah. sure. Um, so Grace is asking, and maybe I can sort of start this one off, but I know you have some. She wants to know how uh, Relax and Reset fits into our program. And I think, um, you know, we've thought a lot about this. Um, it seemed to fit really well during the pandemic oh, yeah. while we had you know daily classes and by Sunday we thought it was perfect for people to have their Sunday as kind of not quite a break but a time to recharge um, do more you know meditation and yoga and stretching so you're ready for your big week ahead exercising but uh, the more we've been talking about it and thinking about it and also uh, you know, the Parkinson's Foundation and other um, publications have posted how, have written about how important mindfulness is. Right. 
for people with Parkinson's, and, which includes you know all of that, the breathing, the meditation, the stretching, the yoga, and it's really the non-motor symptoms. And that's really where I've been pushing. That's why I've been pushing it, because I work so, I mean, obviously I said, I have all my motor symptoms when I, every class, I've got them all on my, you know, on the side of the paper. That's what I'm working on, that's what I want. But I don't work on any non-motor symptoms with the exception of possibly anxiety or depression because we know that by moving, by getting oxygen and blood to the brain, it stimulates serotonin, it stimulates it, it, all those good feeling um, hormones, uh, or, or uh, yeah, hormones yeah, yeah, in the brain. Yeah. But what um, Relax and Reset does is really work on many of the other non-motor symptoms. Digestion, swallowing, which is, I guess, motor, yeah. but still. And, um, just, and just breathing, and breathing. it is anxiety and depression, but it just helps, uh, has really been shown to help. I mean, it helps everybody. It, hel but it but helps with constipation. With, it helps with a lot yeah. of these non, yeah. you know, exercise. And not for nothing, hate to say it, but you know I will, we're the only game in town that does that does um, address non-motor symptoms. I mean, there's, if you look this very, I mean, ex in an exercise class. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can catch lots of lectures on it. Yes. But no one's actually showing you, join me, let's work on this together. And we just like, uh, I mean, we just feel really fortunate. Nadine has um, done a wonderful job just um, creating these uh, chair yoga classes. I mean, there are other chair yoga classes oh. online, but she's really been uh, wonderful at adapting the the exercise or the yoga to use a chair primarily. So um, I highly recommend you give it a try. We're going to be doing a couple little different things with her, breaking it down. But also uh, one thing we also didn't mention is like sleep disorders, which is so prevalent in Parkinson's. So learning breathing exercise techniques are really, really important. It's, yeah. The meditation can be really important, just calming your brain. Calming the brain, right. Yeah, so keep an eye out, because she's actually, uh, will be releasing a really special one just for sleep coming up, a shorter one, but um, Good. To, help, to help you with your sleep. Um, let's see, Heidi said it does help Relax and reset does help her motor symptoms, her tremor. Oh, good. Um, even if it's just part of the class. So yeah, I think it's that breathing um, and just the relaxing can help settle um, tremors. Yeah. Because anxiety also can make them Can make them worse, worse. so, right. Yeah, so that's, I hope that answers um, your question and we're just trying to kind of cover all the bases and um, give as many opportunities as possible to counteract the symptoms. And I see one more question is, um, or two more questions. One is about um, having and getting, doing an ab workout that they like, Jay and Meg really like ab workouts. And I think we've talked about doing like a solely dedicated yeah. ab workout. Coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. Um, abs are interesting because um, um, everybody, you don't realize how often, and I try to throw this in there all the time, every time you lift your leg, you're using your abs. Um, a much more functional and usable way of working your abs is not crunches or planks. I mean, those are great because it will really fatigue your abs, and so you feel like you're working them. But the truth of the matter is marching, walking, lifting your knees, walking upstairs, getting off a chair is, is, if, <laughs> is a much better functional and harder workout for your abs than crunches. Crunches are great, don't get me wrong, planks are wonderful, but planks are really better. They're great ab work, but it's actually better at working on balance than your abs. It really stimulates all those um, um, neurons in the brain uh, and sensors in the brain to tell you where you are so you don't lose your balance, you don't fall to one side. Uh, planks are actually do more in stimulating the brain there than stimulating those core ex uh, muscles. Um, getting in and out of the chair is, believe it or not, is one of the best things you can do for your core.
That's interesting. Yeah. Well, it's functional. Mm -hmm. It strengthens your leg, but it also and it works on balance because you yeah, lose your balance. But lifting up, every time you lift up, you pull your abs in. You can feel it, and you don't have to be real. You don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to pull them in really hard like you do in a crunch. And sitting down, the same thing. Sitting down, you don't even realize it. It's it's instinctual. Your abdominals tighten. They they're triggered. They're fired up when you sit and stand. Yeah. So if you you know. That's one of the things I'm going to be doing in our ab workout is a sit and stand portion of it. But, but I'll, I mean, we'll do crunches, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, and then Bradford was just, uh, was asking um, whether we're going to have an in-person um, train the trainer class. And for right now, Bradford, it's. Uh, we're, we're actually working on a virtual one, so we don't specifically have plans for an in-person, but that may be down the road. So we'll keep you posted on that as, as it all comes together, because we have a new new person working with us who's really fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> so we're, we're very excited about it. Um, Okay, well, I think that we got a Did good insight got, into your... Get into my brain? Into your brain, <laughs> yes. And if anyone else has any other questions, uh, we look forward to seeing more of your uh, creativity <laughs> down the road yeah. and having more fun with you. We're always working <laughs> on having fun. Yes, always having fun. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, thank you all you do. so thank much. You, yes, thank you to all of you for being members on our channel. If there's a topic that you might be interested in down the road, um, please let us know. Uh, we're here for you, and uh, we'll do what we can. Thanks thank a you lot. for all your support, for all your encouragement. Thank you for joining us week after week. I really really look forward to it when i don't see your name in the chat i worry <laughs> it's yeah I, i'm still a mother also at heart so i worry i want to make sure that you're still joining us that you're well and that uh that you're having fun with us so thank you for 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 being so um such great enthusiasts <laughs> yes